Hello boys and girls. Happy Easter. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a good, good, good Friday that was really sad. But we know it's good. You remember? It was a great Friday. Welcome to our class for today. I hope you're having a good day. How's mommy? How's daddy? How's auntie? I hope everyone is okay. Please grab your Bible for our lesson today. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you because you bring good out of bad things. And even in our lives, that is what you do. So open our eyes that you may see wonderful truths in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Please turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Yes, that is found in the New Testament. It's one of the letters of Paul. He wrote a lot of letters. And we are reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 12. I'm going to read. I hope you also have your notebook and your pen so that you record these verses for reading in your private time. Remember, a boy or a girl who loves Jesus must always read his word. It's very important. Let's read. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. Amazing. Boys and girls, Paul wrote this letter to the church in Corinth. Because there are some people who are saying, oh, there's no resurrection of the dead. Once you're dead, you're dead. There's nothing like that. Have you ever heard such stories? Even today, there are people who believe once you die, you'll never ever resurrect. But that is not true. Because of Easter, that's why we celebrate Easter. The time, boys and girls, when Jesus died, and after three days, he rose from the dead. Right now, boys and girls, Jesus is alive. Amazing. So let's go to our Bible story, the next verse, that will confirm for us that truly Jesus rose from the dead. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. Very interesting story that I want us to read. Luke chapter 24 from verse 1. Did you find it? I want you to read it quietly along with me as I read loudly. Okay? Great. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, when the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Boys and girls, remember on Friday, when we were doing our study for Good Friday, we remember we left Jesus had died, he had been crucified, you remember this, he had been crucified, and he had been taken out of the cross, and he had been buried. We remember the women were sad. They had cried. 
the disciples were sad. They had cried. Their Lord had been buried, and they were not sure what would happen. Because they didn't remember Jesus had told them that, that he would resurrect. They didn't even remember that. Boys and girls, when you don't remember the word of God, sometimes we don't understand what God is doing. And so Jesus had been crucified and been buried, and the women and the disciples, everyone had rested on Saturday because it was the Sabbath. And so on Sunday, which is also called the first day of the week, according to the Jewish calendar, Sunday is the first day of the week, the women got up so early before the sun could shine and they took their, their spices. Remember they had made spices and they are carrying their spices nicely. They were running to the grave where Jesus had been buried at the tomb of who? You remember the person who had given his tomb for Jesus to be buried? Yes, it's Joseph. And so the women were going there to make, to put more spices on the body of Jesus. But they were wondering who will rule the stone for them. You know, Jesus had been buried in a tomb, in a big stone. I have a picture of some stones here. And the stones were huge. So they needed somebody to, to grab those huge, that huge stone that was at the entrance and open it up so that they could access the body of Jesus and put some more spices. They loved Jesus, these women. They really did. And so as they went, the Bible says, they found the tomb open. The stone had been rolled. <gasps> they were perplexed. They were shocked. They were terrified. You know, the women could not roll the stone. They were not strong enough to roll the stone. And previously, boys and girls, you know what the leaders did? They told, they went to Pilate and they told Pilate, you know what? He had said, that he will rise after three days. So I want you to put soldiers to guard the place where he's buried. So there were soldiers there guarding. So even the disciples couldn't go there. No one could go there. But these women decided we are going to anoint the body of Jesus. The soldiers couldn't remove the stone. They were on oath to make sure that place is guarded. No one touches the tomb. The disciples couldn't come. They were afraid. And so when the women came and they found the tomb had been opened up, they were shocked. And then something exciting happened, boys and girls. If you read verse 5, verse 4 and 5, while they were wondering about this, oh, two men that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. Those were angels, boys and girls. Those were angels. And angels, boys and girls, are ministering spirits. Angels are messengers that God sends to bring messages to people. God used them so much in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. You remember it was an angel who announced the birth of Jesus to some shepherds who were at the field. It's, the, it's an angel also who appeared to Mary and told her, you're going to have a baby. You remember Christmas story? It was also an angel who appeared. So angels are ministering spirits that are messengers that were sent. And so an angel appeared to these women and told them, are you looking for Jesus? Let's read verse 5. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. They were so shocked. They saw angels. They were so scared. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. <gasps> I'm going to read that again, boys and girls. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Boys and girls, I want you to underline that verse in your Bible. That's our key verse. That's the most important statement we've ever had. It changes everything, boys and girls. These angels knew that Jesus had risen. He was not in the tomb. He had risen. And they were shocked. And then this is what the angels told them again. Remember 
how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, remember? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, be crucified, he must be delivered to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Boys and girls, they had forgotten. The way you and me you forget the word of God. It's not a good thing to forget the word of God. That's why they were terrified. But the angels had them to remember that Jesus was no longer in the grave. He had resurrected. He was not in the grave. He was not on the cross either. He had resurrected. Boys and girls, Jesus did not need the stone to be rolled out so that he could crawl out. No. According to John chapter 20 verse 19, I want us to read John chapter 20 verse 19. Something interesting happened and John records it in his letter. John chapter 20 verse 19. Have you found it? Let's read together. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Did you pick what I picked? Jesus did not need the tomb stone to be rolled so that he could get out. No, Jesus is God. He's the king of kings. He can get in and out through walls. That's what we've just read, right? You know, the disciples had locked themselves in a room. They were so scared of the Jewish leaders who had called for the death of Jesus. They had seen Jesus killed and died and buried and so they were afraid they locked themselves inside the room. They were fear, afraid that they would be arrested. But then Jesus appeared inside the room and yet the door was locked. Because Jesus is not just a human being, he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Even if you lock the door, you can come in. But this miracle happened so that you and me and everyone in the world could believe that indeed Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You can't shut him out. And so the angels tell them, we're looking for the living among the dead. Boys and girls, if you go to Jerusalem today, there are so many graves. Many people have died and been buried, but Jesus is not in the grave. He is not there. He is risen. I want you to underline and memorize that scripture. Luke chapter 24, verse 5, part C to verse 6, part A. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And so that testimony happened so that you and me would believe indeed that Jesus came and he finished what he had come to do. Why did Jesus come? Why was he born? Why did he live? Why did he die? For you and for me. He came to live, to die, to deal with sin once and for all. To take sin and to destroy the power of sin over us. So that when you and me, when we put our confidence in him, when you put your trust in him, when you believe in him, when you allow him to be your Lord, when you have faith in him, you don't have to be condemned again over sin. And that is the greatest news of Easter, boys and girls. That is the great news. That is the good news. That is the gospel. That is the hope that we have. The hope that is beyond death. Boys and girls, we don't need to be afraid of death. That's why we say, Good Friday. Because through death, Jesus brought us life. Have you ever lost a loved one? 
Is it your mommy, your daddy, your friend? Boys and girls, we'll all die someday. But Jesus, by his death and his resurrection, he has given us hope that is beyond death. And so when you believe in Jesus, when you put your hope in Jesus, even when you die, you live again. That is what he tells us in this word. Boys and girls, God no longer lives in buildings. He doesn't live in a temple. His presence is not found in a temple. But he lives in those who believe in him. And he lives to give us eternal life. Have you ever put your faith in Jesus? Have you trusted him? Do you believe in him? Do you believe that he died? That he came, he lived, he gave his life, he suffered, and he died. And then after three days, he resurrected. Right now, boys and girls, do you want to know where Jesus is? He's in heaven. And he's praying for us. And one day he's going to come back. To take those who believe in him. That's why it's important to believe in him. And so as we celebrate this Easter season, we bless God and we thank God for loving us so much that he left heaven and he came and lived and died for us. What a great love. You remember the song that we shall sing? You came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross. My debts you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Do you know that song? I'm sure you do. It's, it, it's a summary of Easter for us. That Jesus came from heaven to earth to show us the way to God. And then from the earth, he was taken to the cross where he died. He was killed for our sins. And then from the cross, he was taken to the grave. He was buried. Remember Good Friday. And from the grave, he went to the sky. He resurrected. And so we worship him. We live to worship him and to praise him. I want you to sing that song with your mommy and daddy, with your guardian, and praise God for the good gift of Easter, the good gift of eternal life. And yes, let's have faith in him, believe in him, love him, praise him, and worship him all the days of our life as we wait for him to come again for us because he will certainly come for us. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for listening. The Lord bless you. Have a great week. And remember, Jesus loves you more than anyone else will ever love you has ever loved you. Do you love him? I do. And you can do so. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, how I pray that you will help us to grasp the, de the depth of your love for us. That you would die for us while we were sinners. Help us to understand Teach us by your Holy Spirit. Help every boy and girl to understand this amazing truth, the cornerstone of our faith as Christians. May you help every boy and every girl to always love and honor you and to obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.